Hello, hello, people. I'm Javi Kawe, joined by Steph Sabra. Hello. What up, bro? What up? We're looking at another Think School video. How RBI's strategy will kill the U.S. dollar dominance in the world economy. Rupee versus dollar war. Full disclosure, I, I mean, I don't know the order of videos coming out. This is also for Steph. I watched another Think School video yesterday with Andrew, the Flash Gordon, and it was related to this about how Russia and China have teamed up to upend the U.S. dollar's dominance in the world economy. And so I'm very, very curious about wow. this as sort of a follow-up. I don't know which one came first. No. So I watched this one, how Russia, China's economic strategy is something, something, something. Gosh, y'all are so mean. What? <laughs> Just government leaders. Let's destroy their dollar. Well, I mean, there's... <laughs> no, I know yeah. it's politics, yeah. but it's like, the rupee comes next. God. Can you guys just meditate and chill out? Hang out with your families. Exactly. In a major move, the Reserve Bank of India has issued a circular for international trade settlement in rupee. The Indian rupee trade could be an alternative. India and Russia can trade without the US dollar. This is real. This could help Indian promote its export and facilitate trade with countries under sanction. Before we get into this, I thought that there was a, a unification, an agreement of some kind. I think it was, but it was for chip manufacturing. Yeah. It wasn't, it was, that's what we watched. Yeah, so it's for the microchip, yeah. We're friends here, but we're enemies here. Yeah. So the RBI is deploying <laughs> Economics 101, increasing the demand Politics. for rupees. Under this new system, foreign traders will require more rupees. And more demand equals more value. Hi everybody, on 11th of July 2022, the Reserve Bank of India made a very very bold announcement whereby domestic traders could settle their imports and exports with Indian rupees. And this move of taking the INR global is a very very big deal because it is set to help India do trade directly with Russia without depending on the American banks. So on one side while this could push us into new horizons of world trade with Russia, Iran and Venezuela, on the other this move could actually destroy our relations both with the US and Europe. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to summarize the other video real quick, okay. or the most important part of it. Basically, everything has to go through the US dollar, or traditionally, it has had to go through the US dollar. That's sort of the bridge point between different countries negotiating. America had like this exclusive contract with like the Middle East and oil or something like that. Everything had to go through US dollar in some capacity, but now things are changing where people are able to trade directly and use their own currency. Like Russia's really fighting for the rubles to be used, and China's obviously fighting for the yuan to be used, so they can get away from dependency on the US dollar. Okay. That's what this is sort of okay. about, or it's related. So this is not just a major move from the economic standpoint, but also from the geopolitical standpoint. So the question is, what is RBI's strategy behind bringing this system? How will this help us trade with Russia and Iran in spite of the Western opposition? How will this help the economy of India? And most importantly, what are the studying materials to help you understand this system better? This video is brought to you by Multiple, but more on this at the end of the video. first thing we need to understand is, why is RBI suddenly allowing international trades to be settled in INR? Well, this is because when Russia invaded Ukraine, the American sanctions removed Russia from something called the SWIFT network. And this has brought several trade challenges for India and many other countries. Now to understand this RBI strategy, we first have to understand how does the existing SWIFT network work okay. and how have the US and Europe very cleverly bullied the world trade with sanctions in the name of world peace. So let's understand how does the SWIFT network work. You see guys, the SWIFT network usually involves six different entities. These are the Indian trader, Indian bank, American bank one, American bank two, foreign bank and foreign trader. So the, a lot of his video was dealing with this, this bureaucratic chain of command just to get your money across to something else. It's insane. It looks like a scam. Yeah, but I mean, it's all in the effort of like- Transparency. And, and, tra well, transparency and keeping, making sure that your transaction goes through. Cause like, let's say you did a, a deal with China, right? Okay. And then China decided to just like inflate their money artificially. Yeah. Now you're kind of screwed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay, that makes, I systems are in place for checks and balances. Right. I get that. Yeah. Now the highlight over here is that the Indian bank will have an account in the American bank where it has its money in dollars. Similarly, the Sri Lankan bank will have a bank account in American bank too, where again, they will store their money in US dollars. 
This is because only US banks can hold dollars. This is the reason why you will see that almost all the banks in the world have an account with a US bank, wherein they have their money stored in dollars. So let's say Reliance wants to import minerals worth 1 crore rupees from Sri Lanka. So what Reliance would do is, they would give the Indian bank 1 crore Indian rupees and ask them to pay the same amount in dollars to the Sri Lankan traders account in the US. So now that Indian bank has 1 crore rupees in its Indian account, it would send a message to its dollar account in America to send 1 crore worth of dollars to Sri Lanka's bank's dollar account in the US. In this case, assuming 80 rupees to dollar to be the exchange rate, $125,000 would be transferred from the Indian account in the US to the Sri Lankan account in the US. And now that the Sri Lankan bank has $125,000 in the US account, it would pay the Sri Lankan trader the equivalent of $125,000 from its account in Sri Lanka. So assuming the exchange rate to be 350 between dollars and Sri Lankan rupee, Whoa. the Sri Lankan bank would pay 4 crore 37 lakh 50,000 Sri Lankan rupees to the Sri Lankan trader. So here, as you can see, this system requires a lot of communication between different banks. It needs a lot of calculation to be done due to fluctuation in exchange rates and more importantly, it requires a complex network of thousands of banks from all across the world. Therefore, it is managed by a highly sophisticated messaging network called the SWIFT network. And this network is very very tightly controlled by both the US and Europe. And the catch over here is that more than 50% of the international trades are done through the SWIFT messaging system alone. So the question is, what is the problem with the system and why is the RBI trying to build an alternative? Well, there are three major problems with this system. Firstly, since this entire system is controlled by Europe and the US, if they do not like you, they will just impose sanctions and cut you off from the SWIFT network. So in short, they will not let you trade through the SWIFT system. And this is what the West did to Iran. Secondly, not letting you trade could still be acceptable. But since US has control over all the country's dollar accounts, they could even freeze your money that is kept in their wow. US bank accounts. Do you like so you can see the impetus for something like this? The yeah. You know why someone might be driven to like try to find a, a, a workaround, and why you know the US government is actually afraid of crypto because like you can just navigate around this now. Yeah. You know with more ease. This is a very controlled system by few for many, yeah. and there's always going to be a problem when it's like that. The other thing I don't know if a video has has explained it to you yet from everything you've watched because I can't remember everything you've watched but Russia actually backed India years ago during one of their wars I think it was when India was at odds with Pakistan well when is India not at odds with Pakistan but they were having like a serious conflict now please correct me in the comments if I'm mis quoting or if I'm misremembering, I believe India was at odds with Pakistan, like it was a serious conflict, and the US decided to back Pakistan in that instance, oh. and Russia backed India. That still like has left a bad taste in India's mouth. Thankfully, like we've gotten away from that and relationships have healed, et cetera, et cetera, but like even when Russia's doing some nasty shit like Ukraine, India's still like, as far as this video is indicating, like I'm just trying to understand what's going on here. India's still like trying to figure out how to trade with Russia and deal with Russia. They're not like, necessarily an ally, but they're not an enemy. Right. So it's what's in between. Well, well, Russia gave weapons and arms to India, or they sold it to them anyway. And so, because I watched that, I'm like, why? Why would? Why would India want to even deal with Russia, given what they're doing? I mean, they have their reasons, yeah. you know, their history. And this is what happened to Russia, wherein after the Ukraine invasion. $300 billion of Russian foreign reserves have been frozen. So in spite of That's having crazy. $300 billion, Russia cannot use its own money to trade. That's it will crazy. limit Russia's ability to do business in dollars, euros, pounds, and yen. The pressure on Russia and on Vladimir Putin is growing. New sanctions on its central bank just today. The sanctions against the central bank of Russia, which were enacted on Monday morning, um, are probably the single largest sanctions action in modern history. And lastly, this system is very very costly. Since all four entities involved in the system take a commission, the cost of transferring money itself costs you anywhere between 1-5%. to So on a transfer of say 120 crores, if the banks add a 3% exchange rate margin, that means they would charge you 3.6 crore rupees just of the exchange rate. Gosh. So all of this put together, even if India wants to trade with Russia, even though we do not have anything to do with the Russia-Ukraine invasion, just because the West does not like it, we are not able to trade with Russia with ease. And what's even worse is that it's not like the Europeans have stopped trading with Russia because they realized that if they do not get Russian gas, their economy will fail. 
So you know what? Gas is everything, man. Yeah. Gas is everything. So his other video was indicating that Russia's like, look, we'll sell you the oil, but you have to pay us in, in rubles. What they're trying to do is make people pay with their currency so that they don't get stopped like the way they did with the sanctions. In the video that you watched, did they explain why... Or is it just for personal gain that the U.S. banks, the two U.S. banks that they have to go through, don't convert, like, actually take anything but the dollar? Like, they convert everything to the dollar? The dollar is the standard. That's why. Because we've just decided yeah, that. Yeah, it was the it was the trusted currency in terms of international global trading. A lot of that is linked to the... Saudi oil, as I understand. We had the gold standard for a while and then Nixon got us off the gold standard yeah. for some reason. It's, uh, they have made exceptions such that some Russian accounts will be allowed to operate so that Europe can still use Russian gas and at the same time be the moral police of the world. You know, somewhere Europe has to grow out of the mindset that Europe's problems are the world's problems, but the world's problems are not Europe's problems. Tell me if buying Russian gas is not funding the war? I mean, why is it? It's only Indian money and uh, oil coming to India which funds, but it's not gas coming to Europe which funds. If, if uh, countries in Europe and the West and the United States are so concerned, why don't they allow Iranian oil to come into the market? Why don't they allow Venezuelan oil to come into the market? This is how the West is using its so-called supremacy to hinder other countries' trade in the name of moral policing and world peace. And this is where, ladies and gentlemen, RBI's move comes in. Here's where India has come up with an alternative system to bypass the system and still do business with foreign countries. And they did that by allowing international trade to be done in Indian currency. Now, if you look at the RBI notification, they say that this can be done through something called Vostro account. So the question over here is, what is Vostro account? How will this transaction actually happen? And if executed, how will this benefit India? Well, to understand the system, let's say a Russian company wants to trade with an Indian named Akshay Kumar and he wants to do that without going to SWIFT. So now the Russian company will have a Russian bank account which has money stored in rubles and this Russian bank will also have an account in India where they would store the money in Indian rupees. Oh, I, got, I got lost because he said Akshay Kumar. A Russian company wants to trade with an Indian named Akshay Kumar okay. and he wants to do that without going to SWIFT. Right. So now the Russian company will have a Russian bank account which has money stored in rubles okay. and this Russian bank will also have an account in India where they would store the money in Indian rupees in an Indian bank okay. and this account is what is called as Vostro account so basically it's a bank's bank account held by a foreign bank in this case it's a oh. Russian bank's bank account held in the Indian bank so now if Akshay Kumar wants to import sunflower oil from a Russian company here's how it will work out firstly Akshay Kumar pays 5 crore Indian rupees to the Russian bank account in the Indian bank which means the Vostro account will get 5 crore Indian rupees then since the Russian bank has 5 crore Indian rupees in its Indian account, assuming exchange rate to be 1.5, this Russian bank will use its account in Russia to pay the sunflower oil trader a converted sum of 3.33 crore ruble. That is how the Russian trader gets 3.33 crore ruble in his account. Now mind you, this would also involve commissions from both the Indian bank and the Russian bank. So in reality, he would get 3.33 crore ruble minus commission charges in his account. Similarly, fewer, though. this Vostro account will There's also be steps. used for exports. So let's say a Russian company wants to import tea from India. So the Russian company would pay 100,000 Russian rubles to the Russian bank. Then, since the Russian bank has Indian rupees stored in the Vostro account in India, that Vostro account would pay 1,50,000 Indian rupees to the tea company. This is again assuming an exchange rate of 1.5 for simplification of calculation. So just like last time, the commissions will be deducted on both sides and the remaining amount will be transferred. This is how the transactions are expected to change format once this system is brought into play. Now the question over here is, if this system is brought into play, what are the advantages that India will enjoy? Well, here's where we've got two game-changing advantages and one big threat that is involved in opting for this system. The first advantage is that we'll be able to trade with Russia, which is one of our biggest trade partners with a bilateral trade of $13 billion. Wow. And considering the condition of Russian trade right now, we could get our goods at a much cheaper cost. Secondly, it's not just Russia, but we could also start trading with other countries that have been sanctioned by the United States. And this includes critical players like Venezuela and Iran. And fun fact over here is that both these countries had already shown interest in using this kind of system. So that's pretty good. Cherry on the cake over here is that this list also includes the one and only United Arab Emirates. 
So this system will help us a lot in terms of decreasing our dependence on dollars. It will help us a lot in protecting our trade from the whims and fancies of the West. And most importantly, it will ease the pressure on our exchange rates as of now. And lastly, the biggest threat to us is that we are literally challenging the dominance of Uncle Sam's dollars. So obviously, the United States will definitely not be happy about it. So don't be surprised if this move is taken back or if United States threatens to impose sanctions on India. Because mind you, our bilateral trade with US stands at $119.42 billion. Wow. So here's where we might face some trouble. This is all that you need to know about the RBI notification, its functioning and its geopolitical implications. And this brings me to the last part, which are the study materials to help you understand this fight of currencies better. What are your thoughts? <laughs> I mean, that's so many as playing chess, right? Mm -hmm. Like they have to be thinking so many steps ahead. Yeah. And I think America has to be thinking so many more steps ahead because for so long, it seems like from this video, we have relied on the fact that we have this currency chokehold on the entire country. Mm -hmm. But once we oh, entire world. don't have, or I mean over the entire world, but yeah. once we don't have that chokehold over the entire world, then they need other ways to actually have a means of, let's say another Russia invades another Ukraine like what do you do other than just money things yeah yeah I didn't realize how all that worked until the previous video from think school you know US dominates the globe not just through that but like with our military and all that stuff and so they've been saying for years US won't stay number one I've been hearing that since I was a kid yeah same I'm like okay when does that happen and, all? <laughs> and I feel like it's gonna happen soonish but it's just weird because you know watching what was ha what's been happening in China and now Russia I'm like I have no idea where any of this is headed because I know for sure that that a lot of people are unhappy with what China's doing. The way China treats its own people is highly questionable. I don't know how you can get to number one. I mean, not that the US government, you know, does the best job of how it treats its people, but it's certainly better than the way China's treating its people. I would say like, by and large, you know, you have a lot of people who, who can't afford to live in just regular homes in China. And then they got these ghost towns that no one's living in. They just keep building out more and more ghost towns just because it looks good for the economy. and whatever whatever That's, yeah the and, ghost towns are crazy and then everything with taiwan and hong kong it's just like it's nuts the u.s can just impose a sanction on you and just stop a certain amount of income coming in or a certain amount of you know, access to your own money i can see why you would make a move like this and it highlights for me why so many people are drawn towards crypto but the government is trying to control that as well. But it's wild because if you look at crypto, like you can see exchange rates and stuff like that, and you can convert your money like really fast and you're taking out the middleman. It's pretty wild. I don't know if it's exactly like related to what this video is diving into or dove into rather. For me, this is very educational because I have grown up in the West with Western media, Western news, you know, and I try my best to be open-minded and see what other people are saying. This is like the argument outside of our country. People are so mad at us why are they mad at it we have no idea why people hate americans and like this is this helps us to understand oh, this what's going is definitely on. one of the reasons and then yeah. i forget who was talking about the european and western mindset that when we decide something's good or bad when we decide to help or not when we decide that like that's okay to do that from business with them and not them i can see as another country being wildly hypocritical yeah it's like a shady girlfriend yeah you're like okay um i mean it does stress me out i think everyone in every Every country is stressed out and then we just have top tier officials running our lives and we're just supposed to be like okay well i hope they make the right decision yeah. and then it can change the course of history forever i feel like you'd be surprised at how incompetent so many people are at the top of the chain i know it's yeah. scary it's like our entire cabinet i'm like i feel like you're not very good at your job <laughs> But anyway, I thought that was highly educational. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Here's hoping that, you know, we don't blow ourselves up. So, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Let us know your feelings in the comments below. Ed feel free to educate us in the comments. Uh, I'm Jabby Kway. This is Steph Sabra. Peace out.